Welcome to episode number eight of our series cost management, how to build your financial model. Today I will discuss another important topic, break even analysis and the market mix scenarios. So let's start quickly. The break even point is the production level at which total revenues equal total expenses. Also, it is the price at which total costs equal total revenue i.e. we have no profit, no loss point. But what is the importance of break even and the market mix scenarios for pricing? Should we use the break even and the market mix scenarios during our pricing? Let us ask our experts, Brian Labitros. Brian is the director of FB and A practice at AFB, the Association for Financial Professionals. He recommends the following survey 2020 AFB, FB and A survey, project investment and the cost of capital survey. Brian also stated that regarding the break even analysis, you can find some thoughts in this survey research from a few years ago. We report that payback break-even was the second most used evaluation of investments, ahead of NPV, ROI, IRR, etc. There is a good graphic and good discussion that follows. Really, I would recommend you to read this very important report. It's 34 pages. Now, let's start our first example using break-even analysis with a single product. On the left, you will find your sales quantity, your unit price, your variable cost per one unit. To calculate the contribution per one unit, it will be your unit price minus your variable cost per one unit. The same for the total contribution. It will be your total revenue minus your total variable cost. The same concept. Finally, your EBIT or your net profit will be your contribution minus your total fixed cost. Now let us try to calculate our break even firstly in units. In other words, the total units that we should sold in order to get zero profit. In other words, no profit, no loss, the break even. It will be your total fixed cost divided by your contribution per unit. Again, contribution per unit, not your total contribution. So your total fixed cost divided by your contribution per unit. Now, what about our break-even price? In other words, the price at which total cost is equal total revenue or where no profit, no loss. For this, we will divide our, our total fixed cost by our variable cost. Again, by sorry, by our total sales quantity. Take this, it means our fixed cost per one unit because we divided our total fixed cost by our sales quantity. So now we get our fixed cost per one unit. Then we will add our variable cost per one unit. So this is our total cost is variable and fixed, bear one unit. When our total cost is equal, our unit price, it will get sure zero profit. Finally, the our break even in revenue, sure will be our break even in units multiplied by our break even in price. This is our break even revenue. Let us calculate this by the goal seek function. In order to confirm if we calculated all this figure 
correctly or not. Now, select this cell, go what if, go and seek. We need net profit or EBIT with zero, to be zero. The break even, the, our break even mean a zero profit. Firstly, by change in unit, so we need to change this sales quantity. Press OK. OK. It is the same. So our break even that will get zero net profit is the same by gold seek or by calculation, regular calculation. Now control Z. Now we need to calculate what the break even in price. So again, our net profit needed to be zero by changing this time the unit price. Press OK. Look, it is the same. So also the calculation of unit price or the break even price per unit is the same by using gold seek or by using the regular formula. Now let's do the same but with multi products. Again, in raw for the sales quantity, and in raw 5 the percentage of each product quantity to the total sales quantity. Or the market mix ratio that we will use to calculate the market mix break even. In the contribution ratio of each product, it's equal the contribution ratio per unit divided by the unit sales price. Based on this ratio we can arrange our market mix priority, we can do this by using the rank excel function to rank our sorted in descending order. The most higher contribution first then the lower contribution ratio, I will use this ratio in our next episode and not today. Again, in raw 14 to 17, the total revenue, total variable costs, total contribution and the contribution margin. Finally, you can apply conditional formatting and dynamic shapes, as we discussed it in our first episode of Excel for FPNA and cost management. I would invite you to watch it. Let's now calculate the weighted average sales price by using some product function as we did in episode number 4 and number 5 in of Excel for FPNA and cost management. Also, I would invite you to watch it. It is not correct to use the average Excel function for a multi products. Finally, the contribution will be the sales price minus the variable cost per unit. Now, let's calculate the break-even level in units, same as we did in the previous example. By dividing the total fixed costs by the contribution per unit. Again, by the contribution per unit not the total contribution. Don't forget to press F4 for cell M21 the total fixed costs, then copy the formula for the other products, and for the weighted average break-even level in cell M24. Again, the break-even level in price will equal the total costs per unit by dividing the total fixed costs by the quantity of each product, then add the variable cost per unit. Again, don't forget to press F4 for cell M21 the total fixed costs, then copy the formula for the other products, and for the weighted average break-even level in cell M25. Finally, the break-even level in revenue will calculate it by multiply the break-even in price for each product, by the original sales quantity in raw 4, not the break-even level in units. Again, Use the actual sales quantity in raw 4. Then copy the formula for the other products, 
and for the weighted average break-even level in cell M26. Now let's calculate the market mix break-even for each product. In other words, the quantity should be sold from each product to not lose or break even. You should multiply the weighted average break even units in cell M24 by the market mix ratio in raw 5. Don't forget to press F4 for cell M24, copy the formula for the other products, and sum the total quantity in cell M28. Sure, the result in cell M28 should equal the quantity in cell M24. Now, let's check the final result. In cell O14 multiply the weighted average break-even units for the market mix in cell M28 by the weighted average sales price in cell M7. Then multiply the weighted average break-even units in cell M28 by the weighted average variable cost per unit in cell M8. As you can see, the net profit or the EBIT in cell O22 should be zero, because we've used the break-even units. But this still is examples. What about applying the break-even analysis and the market mix scenarios during recession and inflation? Please pay your attention. The following section is the most important part of our video today. We asked James Rimmer, the principal consultant at the Expense Reduction Analysts, to provide his insight about this issue. James stated that, We are all used to break even analysis in steady economic times. Your prices are fixed so to that of your direct costs so break-even points are easy to calculate. Current conditions are such that direct costs for many are volatile, and selling prices can also change significantly. On top of this as many countries face recession, prices might have to fall to stimulate demand. My advice, focus upon scenario planning. Rather than a simple focus on break-even you need to be able to adapt and respond quickly to market conditions. What will you do if sales fall 5%, what will be your response? We know inflation is likely to continue to be a challenge in 2023 although expected to slow. But what happens if your costs increase or one of your key suppliers fails due to recession what do you do then? You shouldn't wait for these issues to hit you. You should be ready through strong scenario planning. If you get your planning right the agility should ensure some clarity on things like break-even points but during recession and inflationary periods a focus upon agility and scenario planning would be my suggested focus. On and one last thing, look at your loss-marking customers and loss-making products. But be careful the choices you make, as we all know how we allocate overheads can greatly change the profit of a product. In the next episode, I will try to show you how to apply agility and scenario planning using the break-even and the margin of safety. See you.